What is up, everybody? Happy Chris and Amanda Day. And thank you all so much for joining us here again live on our newish time. I'm going to go newish now that it's like the second <laughs> time. So it's a newish time of 8 15 in the morning on uh, Eastern Standard Time. And uh, we hope that you're all uh, waking up with us today. So, Amanda Sharp. Good morning, Chris Bagbio. Welcome to Chris and Amanda Day. <laughs> <laughs> Happy Chris and Amanda Day. You know, we we have to find a better way to like spin in that it's a morning show. Yeah, I know. Well, I'm still getting. I'm actually still we're getting like, used to the fact that like we're sort of this like morning show that happens live. So, yes. You know, so for everybody that's listening, uh, you know, and or watching a replay, you know, thank you for hanging out with us. But yeah, when Amanda and I do the show, it's it's live initially, and it's on Monday mornings now. So we've like you know now we're like a a morning show. Right, like we're part of like you could listen to us on your way to work in the morning if you on wanted. On your morning to commute, like right. I've always wanted to say that. <laughs> right. <laughs> on your on your morning commute, check out the Chris and Amanda show coming to you live from the Chris and Amanda studios. <laughs> I'm living the dream every single Monday morning now. <laughs> <laughs> you really are. We, we are. We're we're living the dream what every single Monday morning. Kelly and Ryan, woo. <laughs> I mean, it's Chris a great and Amanda. Too, but Chris and Amanda, they're lucky we're at eight fifteen and not nine. <laughs> yes, they are very lucky. Very lucky. <laughs> Watch out. Watch <laughs> out is right. Well, this week we have another exciting show. I'm super we pumped do. for this. Um, it's just back to like our normal broadcasting. <laughs> <laughs> we're not yeah. we're talking about death this week. <laughs> we're talking oh. about our normal like songs oh randall driving nowhere but still listening thank you randall we appreciate you very very much you're the best He's, he is the best is the best indeed um he has been gosh one of our supporters from the very beginning yes from our humble humble beginnings which is coming up soon this is this is a big deal you guys our anniversary is heading our way very quickly and we definitely are trying to come up with something a little special for that yeah. uh, i i think a tribute to how this came to be is necessary yep. um because there's a story behind it and for those who know us well know this but if you're just listening for the very first time chris and i have still yet to meet in person can you i know that? that's the most wild thing People ask me that all the time. They're like, so how did you meet Amanda? Like, did you guys like, or I get the, where in New Jersey is Amanda from? And I go, <laughs> Amanda's not in New Jersey, actually. She never was. Never uh, was. She's in Michigan. Oh, well, how'd you guys meet? On Clubhouse. Clubhouse? What the heck's that? And I'm like, <laughs> is that like, is that like, is that like a bar or something? I'm like, no, it's like a tap. <laughs> like, like, people are like, Amanda. <laughs> they're like, the Clubhouse. That sounds, that's. Kind of sounds like a happening place. Like, where, it, where is that? <laughs> it does. I don't really do bars very well. But uh, back in the day when I was young, there was a bar that was for 18-year-olds. And I thought I was pretty cool when I went there. <laughs> All ages club. <laughs> All ages club. And I just look back and I go, man, there was probably some people back there in the day going, mm, like 18-year-olds slipping in there with, what, 30-year-olds, 40-year-olds. That's just yep. like. That's just a terrible idea. <laughs> terrible idea. <laughs> a terrible oh, idea. Can't wait to watch this later. Intervals. Oh, All yeah. right. Well, apparently, I'm the only one who didn't right. know who Intervals was, Joshua. <laughs> <laughs> well, I only know who Intervals is because of Joshua. So interesting. Yes. yes. Well, yeah, let's so, dive into the show then. Yeah, so let's dive into the show. So thank you once again for everybody who's watching with us live today, right now. And thank you for everybody who will watch the replay in or listen to this wherever you get podcasts. So please make sure you hit that subscribe or follow button wherever you are receiving the Chris and Amanda show. We greatly appreciate it. And we want you to do that. So that way you get notified every time we go live, every time a new episode is posted, whether it's the video version or the audio version, you can watch all the, all, all the video versions over on our YouTube channel, the Chris and Amanda show, or once again, wherever you get podcasts, you can listen to the audio version of the show. And if you'd like to commission your own show of the Chris and Amanda show, because you can do that, that is a thing. Uh, just head over to our buymeacoffee.com backslash TCAS or use the link in the video description or the show notes below and you can commission your own episode of the Chris and Amanda show. And with that being said, Amanda, 
Would you like to let everybody know who's a first time listeners or watchers how the show works? Absolutely. And thank you so much, Chris Baglio. <laughs> <laughs> how the show works is <laughs> we come from very different backgrounds. <laughs> musically and like people wise too like we're just different people but um our music choices are very different and so chris sends me three songs from a list i send him three songs from my list and we rate them on a very complicated scale of five records one record and i'm like one record with five fingers <laughs> <laughs> One record <laughs> means wah, wah, wah. it's a dumpster fire. There we go. <laughs> Sorry, a little slow on slow slow on the slow on the drops today. <laughs> and, and five records meaning it's just a fabulous song. We maybe would not have listened to it otherwise, and it is now on our playlist. Yeah, I need go. the other one. That <laughs> <laughs> the one that scares me. <laughs> the, ah! <laughs> that's, there we go. <laughs> um, so that's our our complicated scale of how we rate the show. <clears throat> yeah, absolutely. And so we've been doing this for over almost a year now, almost and. Now. You know what? We've had a lot of lot of really good, interesting shows. We've shared a lot of great music with each other. I have discovered a lot of new music because of you, Amanda Sharp, and uh, I appreciate that. Likewise, you and we'll get to that on your number three song to me because I've got a lot to say about that, Chris Baglia. Which, speaking of your list, so your number one song to me, sir, is mm -hmm. Meridian by Intervals. Oh yes, that I had previously mentioned I had never heard of before. <laughs> <laughs> number two. And I I wouldn't think you would have. I would be shocked if you're like, whoa, I can't believe you gave me intervals. That's awesome. I know those guys. <laughs> Things that will never happen. <laughs> Number two song to me was Letters to You by Finch. And your third song to me was Alive by, is it Pod or P.O.D.? P.O.D. You know P.O.D. Are you down you know, with yeah. me? <laughs> <laughs> you down with O.P.P. There you go. Just you down with OPP? You know, naughty by <laughs> nature. P.O.D. <laughs> <laughs> so there's that. <laughs> All right. So your songs to me this week. <laughs> uh, strap in, folks. Thank you all so much for hanging in there. Just hang in there. I'm telling you, it's a good show. It's a very good show. Uh, so <laughs> your songs to me this week are The Lone Bellow, who I kept saying The Lone, the lone Below, and then I was like, oh, there's two L's. It's Bella. Bella. I'm like, now it makes more sense because I'm like, what is it? <laughs> so Count on Me is the name of that song. Uh, Patty Griffin with Heavenly Day and The Wreck of the Edmund Fitzgerald by Gordon Lightfoot. What a surprising song that was. Had you ever heard of that song? I'd never heard of okay. that song ever. I... And I was like, wow. So anyway, I don't want to go too much into it. But yeah, I, I mean, I... I know Gordon Lightfoot, but like that song, mm -hmm. zero, never heard of it before. I, it's, I just threw it on because I wanted to see your reaction of it. I thought historically, like you would probably enjoy it, maybe. But I, uh, I have reactions it. to it, and I will share them. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. So I feel like I always dominate and go first. Would you like to go first this time, Chris? Bagley? Sure, I will go okay. first this time. And I'm going to just start off by saying that out of the three songs that you gave me this week, this by far is my favorite. This really? is this. I really enjoyed this song a lot. So I'm talking about the Lone Bellow, uh, Count on Me. And I really liked this song a lot. I thought it was really cool. And, you know, you have sent me some really interesting songs. I think where I'm starting to fall, and, and this I've listened to, if you want to call the genre indie country or alt country or I don't even know, indie folk. I don't know what, like, mm -hmm. there seems to be different versions of what you want to call this. But I feel like over time of me listening to music, there's definitely a section of this sort of sound that I really enjoy. Sure. And you have sent me some really good bands that I'd never heard of before, artists who are sort of in this, like, gray area of, like, hey, we're indie rock, but we're also country kind of a thing. So this Lone Bellow to me, like is definitely in that that genre that they fit right in there and i really like this a lot i thought it reminded me a lot of at the very first i thought wow this is very kings of leon sounding and i like the kings of leon do you know who the kings of leon i don't are? i was like who's that what's that say it again <laughs> i bet if i played you like their a couple of their hit songs okay. you'd be like oh i know that song okay you know that song need need somebody I forgot. I can't. I'm not going to bother singing the whole thing. But I'll, I'll send it to you. You're going to be like, oh, I think. I... 
<laughs> send it to me. <laughs> you you may know it, so I will uh, I will send it to you. Anyway, uh, I had I felt like they had a very Kings of Leon type sound, um, and I and I really dug that. So I did a quick like digging. I'm like, okay, so who are they? What are they about? Because I see that they're like trio and. So I found uh, online, so the Lone Bellow began as a songwriting project for the singer Zach Williams, whose wife had suffered temporary paralysis from a horseback riding accident. During his wife's recovery, Williams coped with the experience by writing in a journal. At the urging of his friends, Williams learned how to play guitar and turn his journey journal entries into songs. So he turned his journal entries into songs. Following his wife's recovery, the couple moved to New York City. And that is where he began performing and uh, and eventually uh, connected with the two other members of the band and became the Lone Bellow. So I read, I found this um, quick blurb about this song in americansongwriter.com. And so singer Zach Williams said, after singing Count On Me together in the studio, we walked outside and couldn't help but think about the sense of camaraderie and kindness that seems to happen at our shows. Like strangers becoming neighbors, wrapping their arms around each other's necks and saying, I got you. And I thought that was really cool because it was very, to me, like, I think summed up the song really well. So mm -hmm. I really like this song a lot. I, I uh, It's making me want to explore more from this band, for sure. I thought this was a good, like, I'd be, I, I guarantee you heard this on, like, one of your playlists. I'm you know thinking. I did. <laughs> I'm thinking that's where you heard it. So. I like that you heard it and then shared it with me, and now I dig it. And I like I like this band. I think this is cool. I want to hear. I'm interested in hearing more from them. So Lone Bellow, count on me, four records for sure. Four records. like 100%. Nice. I, I would almost give it five records, but I'm going to go with just four at this time because I want to explore the band. So I think this is it got me excited to listen to more from this band. So, so I think it's a fun. good song. Good song. I I like when I send you stuff that it isn't like in your lane of what you normally enjoy. That's really exciting to me. So that's fantastic. Yes. So thank I, you for sending I, me the I, lone bellow. Your four records. And the message of that song, I just love so much. I think when we're knocked down, we just learn so much more than when we're like on top of the world. Right. So I love right. it. I did not know the history of it at all. I, yeah. I mean, it was... Uh... You know, once again, it's like I discovered it. You send me things and I want to go look at them. Like, mm -hmm. where did it come from? What is their background? What's their cred? <laughs> you know, because <laughs> like cause sometimes you find out like, oh, this person was in this band. It was in this band. Or, and it's just it's always an interesting story about how. And so once the, I was like, wow, what a great story. Like he he okay. wrote he turned these writings in his journal into songs and learned how to play guitar. Like, you know, what I'm saying passion. You, you got to oh. love that. You got to love that. Therapy too. I mean, I feel yeah. like that's why I love music so much because it's so therapeutic. And that's why I think there's so many types of different styles of songs and music because it just really helps everyone work through their emotions, not just as the artist, but as the consumer as well. Yeah. So um, I like that. And that's where I think it's perfect for those who are new to this <laughs> show. <laughs> this is very much into the facts. I'm very into the emotions. So his songs, or the songs that he'll review for me always have like a lot of history to them. And I, when I go into his, go, I didn't like how it made me feel. <laughs> That's about as simple and complicated as we are. Um, but your first song to me, Meridian by the Intervals. So I listened to it. Yeah. And I'm waiting for the song to start. <laughs> I think this on purpose. And it didn't start, Chris. So I'm, I'm fast forwarding, like I'm going back and forth going, I'm missing something. I am missing something. So then I was like, you know what? He had a really busy, like long weekend. I bet he uploaded the wrong one. <laughs> so I go online <laughs> and I'm searching Meridian by Intervals and all I can find are the same versions. And I go, I can't believe he was the first one to send me just an instrumental song. Yep. I found that very fascinating. And I did it on purpose. So with that being said, I love instrumental music. Mm -hmm. It gets me in the feelings. It makes me feel things. I absolutely listen to classical music a lot. It's right. just something that I really, really enjoy. So I really enjoyed this. After okay. I real like once I started it over with the understanding that it is what it was right. <laughs> and I really could like listen and enjoy it for what it was, which was just a instrumental um, 
song. So I was very surprised that this was again on your list. So tell me, I guess I don't have, I didn't do any research on the interval. So About tell intervals. me how this ended up on your list. Okay. And so I'm intrigued that Joshua loves it too. So I'm going, yeah. I, what? All right. So quickly. So intervals is uh, really one guy. His name is Aaron Marshall. He's from Toronto. So they're a Canadian band. And he, uh, I mean, they originally started out as a full band. So their very, very first record is okay. actually vocals on it. And then after that, kind of a, they, a lot, all the guys left and he kept going, but he is just an amazing guitarist. I mean, he just, I mean, he writes everything and he's got studio musicians he plays with, but he definitely falls into that line of like what you would call like, uh, you know, progressive metal, instrumental metal, um, hard rock, that kind of thing, but it's all instrumental. And it's a very long line of there is this genre of music, which is kind of for a lot of people, they consider it very nerdy because it's all highly technical, like guitar playing, even going all the way back into like the eighties where you had all the shred guys who, you know, just made these incredible like metal shred records and, and uh, just nothing but instrumental music. I've always been into that stuff. I always liked it. Uh, Josh, my buddy, Joshua, who checked in before, he was the one who introduced me to intervals. He's like, I think you're really going to dig this. So it's very like noodly, really highly like technical a lot of movements things like that but i really i i love this kind of stuff and intervals is one of sort of like these bubble of bands that sort of have this like sound very very prog rock really like i said highly technical playing and i wanted to send this to you because a i thought you would like it and b because i know you're so much on the feelings and like the <laughs> lyrics and all that i wanted to see how you'd react to something with no lyrics at all all their stuff intervals is all this. It's all Are instrumental. All yep, they've got like five rec four records out. I'm actually, hopefully, my buddy actually Josh, you just checked in. I think we're gonna go see them in a couple weeks in New York City. So um interesting. they are, and I've seen them once before, and they are ridiculous. They don't miss a note. <laughs> Nothing, it's like unreal watching them play. So all their music is like this. That is so exciting. I exactly. can't wait to dive into their I records and actually them. listen. Do yeah. they have Christmas? They don't have Christmas yet. Wouldn't that be amazing? But I will send you, if you want to hear some heavy, like technical Christmas instrumental music, yes. send I will send me. you August Burns Red, um, who are a Christian metalcore band, uh, but they do Christmas records every year. They release them mostly instrumental. And uh, and they just do like their version of nice. like highly technical playing. I'll send it to you, but awesome. that's a they're they're great. I think you'll like that. So great. So yeah. with with that being said, I give it four records. All right, I'm very pleased. Right on. Look yeah. at you digging digging intervals. I right. think you're gonna love listening to all their other records. And I feel like I'm gonna definitely find a five recorder on their record. I'm sure you will. I'm sure you will. It's just a matter and, of which one speaks to me the most. I think so. And there's no lyrics. So that's why I wanted to send this to you as like, okay, we well, have yet to send you an instrumental track. Um, I think this would be a good one to choose. And I had a lot of songs from Intervals. I'm like, I think Meridian's a good one for you. So Very cool. Very, very cool. But I see that you were, um, Randall was checking in and he was saying yes. his hometown. So where is his hometown? Toronto. You, oh, Toronto. Ontario. Didn't, didn't hear what you had had said. So very interesting. Yes. So they right are now, fellow he Canadians. Is across the border from us. <laughs> yeah. Um, one day we'll meet him in person too. All right. So I love my second song to you. And so I had I a feeling you would. I go, this <laughs> is once again, there are certain songs that Amanda sends me. And I go, the, this is like, this is so Amanda Sharp. Like, these are like <laughs> tailor made as if these songs were written with Amanda on the artist's mind. <laughs> this is one of those songs. Because <laughs> I would, there are songs where I just picture Amanda driving and belting it out with the windows down as she drives around her empire in Ida <laughs> <laughs> that she's built. <laughs> <laughs> and oh, blasting so songs like this one patty griffin have heavenly day so uh really sweet song and i actually when i read about how the song came about i was a little like wow i would have never guessed that i would have never guessed that so 
Uh, so Patty Griffin, when introducing this song live at her shows, Griffin revealed that she wrote this song about her dog, which symbolizes the inherent peace and beauty in the world. It's a very uplifting song about how a miserable day can take a 180 degree turn and really improve all of her troubles, being able to go away and have a great day. In a recent interview or in an interview, sorry, with CMT, Griffin explained her inspiration behind writing the song. The weather had been kind of crappy for me for a while, and it was a lot of road construction going on in our neighborhood. Noisy jackhammer, all that. Then it all went away, and it was a beautiful day, and the blossoms were coming out, and the dogs were running around and rolling in the grass. Really doesn't get any better than that. So that's what she said. It was the whole reason how the song came about, what her inspiration behind the song is, and I was like, okay, that's really cool. Like, I, I like that. It was initially about her dog. Like, it's just that whole thing. Mm -hmm. I thought that was really, really sweet. And uh, and I go this once again, one hundred percent an Amanda Sharp song. This is <laughs> so you know it's it's uh the song itself. My reaction to it is it's it's uplifting. It is upbeat. It's very positive. Uh, it makes you feel good. I didn't. There wasn't other. There was a few things in the lyrics I felt like oh, there was one line I wrote it down and I, I, I somehow it's not here anymore. And I, it was one line. Oh, I wish I'd written it down better. Like in a place where it wasn't like scattered. <laughs> um, but uh, I, I would say that I like this song, but I'm not like a hundred percent. Like, I don't know if I would I think I may make a playlist, maybe like, like sort of like my Sunday morning, the Sunday, the Sunday playlist. So I think it, it, it gets there. I don't know. It doesn't make me feel the way I got excited about the, the, the long bellow, the lone bellow. Like sure. that was like excited me. So good song fun tune very positive song and I, I feel like my rating's not gonna reflect even because it's like i'm kind of like will i go back and to listen to the song i think i would for sure mm -hmm. like i said i think it may make a playlist so i i know we're we've been talking about percentages so i think i'm gonna <laughs> give it a 3.5 <laughs> that's fair that's fair we can do a 3.5 because we don't make the graphics anymore so. no no so we can absolutely play around yeah with with the range so um, i don't think it's quite a four for me that's but fair. i absolutely don't hate it doesn't offend me <laughs> as you would say i'm not offended <laughs> by it no it makes me feel good i like the fact that the dog i like the the dog part is the hook for me like not that i would have gotten that from the song but like the fact that she was like sure it's a song about her dog which in her like inherent peace and beauty in the world and i'm like i look at my dog all the time i look at milo and i look at him and i'm like buddy you have got the best life man like you just like, nothing to worry about i know everything's gonna be okay my my mom and dad are gonna take care of me it's just like man yeah like right <laughs> love it they really are um a special thing in this world and do you know how i found this song <laughs> so like, I'm not. It wasn't the Pandora playlist or no, the, the no. Okay, so it's not the Pandora playlist. No. Okay. It is so Netflix, um, the Haunting on Hill Street or the 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 Haunting. What is that show? Haunting Gosh. on Hill House. Thank you, thank you. I'm like, why? I should have wrote it down. It's not. I knew it. It's on there. Oh, really? Yep. When ne like the episode about Nell and how wow. she looked like the black lady and spoiler oh. alert, sorry, friends. And that's how I was like, oh, my gosh, I love this song. I love how something so beautiful can be in like a horror show. <laughs> I love that series. That was so good. Wow. I, I'd have to, I'll have to go back now. Now I'm like, ooh. Episode five, season one. Okay. So well, yeah, I, I didn't even, say, I didn't say even realize one. it. Um, but so, so, so good. And she's probably my favorite character in that show. Oh, yeah. Well, so, so relevant, tragic. so perfect for the yeah. scene that they play it in. So. Go to Netflix, check it out. I think it's still on Netflix. It should be. It's still on Netflix. <laughs> All right, Chris Beglio. Your second <laughs> song to me is Letters to You by Finch. <laughs> <laughs> I I feel the same way you felt about my second pick. This is how I'm feeling. Like, I wasn't, it's probably my yep. least favorite. No, it, I, it's not probably. It is my least favorite. Mm -hmm. I had never heard of Finch before. Most people haven't. It's... The classic, we've joked before, the classic breakup song by men. Yep. Where like Taylor Swift would be like, you screwed me over. Like, you're dead to me now. Where men's breakup songs are like, oh, I should have did better. I miss you forever now. I'm forever going to be like sad. <laughs> like, <it's, laughs> like, just learn your lesson before you get to this point. This song is so emo. It's like, <laughs> it's so like, I miss you. I miss you so. Like, it's <laughs> It's so 
Oh, so message for you men out there. Don't get to this point. Take care of business today so you don't have to re like love letters to you by Finch. Yeah, but the thing is, it's always going to happen. <laughs> there would be no country music without this. <laughs> This is true. This is so true. Um, so it was, it wasn't surprising to me. It was very like in the lane of what I expected as it started. Right. Yeah. Um, so I was, I was a little bored by it. It wasn't exciting. It wasn't original, which I know some country music can argue that it's the same way. So it just kind of landed flat for me. I wouldn't okay. pass it. I wouldn't skip it. I wouldn't reach over to play it. Okay. So on the skip, so on the skip channel, if it mm -hmm. came on, I wouldn't reach the skip, but I would let it play out. I would let it play out. I wouldn't even skip it in my car when it's that close. Right. So it's it, even okay. past that skippage level. Got so it. Okay. Good. So that's good. That's a good that's level. Good. All right. That's uh, acceptable. But with that being said, I only give it a three. Okay. And that's fair. And that's kind of where I thought that you might land on this song. Um, I, I like this record a lot. I'm, I'm a big, well, at least sure. this record. And then this was like a classic thing where a band put out like an amazing first record and then mm. never ever lift up to the potential afterwards and just such a bummer different directions i mean they grew musically for sure but it just never they never they never achieved the same thing that they achieved with that first record why do you think that is um i think because everybody just wanted to hear this first record over and over just wanted them to do a part two to this record and and they couldn't um, duplicate it yeah, and I feel like they kind of veered their sound too. They changed their sound from this like punk emo post hardcore kind of a thing to like a little bit more straight ahead, like just hard rock or punk. Okay. Hard, I don't know. I don't even know what you would call it. Just they just changed the sound a bit. And I think it just a lot of people. And I also, too, honestly, like a lot of this music that came out around that time, um, those fans grew up. Like if if you were like sixteen or seventeen when you heard this band, you know, by the time their next record came out, you're kind of like in college and you're moving on and you're listening to other things, and it just, you know, it was fun for the moment. True. Mo that record came out at a right time in the moment in the scene, did its did its thing, blew the band up, band was everywhere, and then by the time their next record came out, their fans had moved on. So wh what do you think? makes that happen because there's some music that is so lifetime worthy to right. us. I think it's just the artist. I mean, I think it's artists understanding and, and always constantly like while they will try new things and grow, they still are able to retain their, their fans, you know, like they, their fans are willing to be there with them, be real fans where some bands are just really good at being a flash. And, and I don't think there's anything wrong with that, but sometimes they, they you put out a record at the right time, the right place. And it's a good representation of that time in your life or in a lot of people have that shared experience. And by the next time they put out a record, you're kind of like, mm, I don't know if this band really speaks to me the way they did when it was this time, you know, when I was this age That's at fair. this moment, you know, and, and therefore they kind of like lose their base. Like it just isn't, it, there's that connection's kind of not there like it was you know and i think some some artists and there's not many but they can transcend that i mean when you think about the the amount of artists that can do it it's it's tough man it's tough it's tough to keep a fan base staying relevant in music we've discussed this before yeah. is is quite a gift and that's why i think like when we talk about dolly just those really powerhouse yeah. people and you know who i just brought up yesterday to owen and marcus i said i can't believe snoop dog is so relevant still. so rele might be even relevant like, more now than ever yeah they have defied like all the odds of mm -hmm. aging and aging out of the industry they are like just embracing it i love it so yeah. well done martha and snoop <laughs> that's right that's right well you know what it is once you reach once you get into pop culture popular culture mainstream culture that's when you kind of get launched into like the next stratosphere and you become more than just the, you know, the musician in a way, like now you're, you're, you're everything. Like you're in the lexicon of, of popular culture, basically. You're an icon now instead of right. Just, uh, and you become more of a brand and, and a whole sure. image rather than just like, you know, and I Fair think enough. that's when you get into like the dollies and, the Martha Stewart's and you know Kiss and yeah um you know Snoop Dogg and and you know even Bon Jovi like you just get into like this realm of like legendary status legendary, legendary. Oh, so good legendary so good. <laughs>
<laughs> so fun. Yes. Oh my gosh, we could just talk for forever. <laughs> yes, we could. Yes, 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 we could. But we do have two more songs to talk about. Two more songs. All right. So your next oh, by the way, Randall check it. Randall's got Randall check it. The girlfriends and wives tell them to all get real, tell them to get real jobs. <laughs> That's funny, Randall. You're, you're not wrong, Randall. <laughs> you are not wrong. <laughs> that's funny. It is funny. in life, that's so true. It is. It Starving so is. artist is a phrase for a reason. <laughs> that is 100%. <laughs> All right. So your next song to me, your last song to me, was a song I'd never heard of in my life. The Wreck of the Edmund Fitzgerald by Gordon Lightfoot. This is like an mm -hmm. epic song, man. I it no is. idea. Like, heard, it is I'm like, what is it? To Celine Dion's yeah. My Heart Will Go On from Titanic. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's a bold claim. However, so I will say this the, the history of this, I, I'm, I'm, I, if I'd learned about the Edmund Fitzgerald, I, I had forgotten about this wreck. Sure. So, um, so I was like, wow, but I'm glad because now this is on my radar and I was like, wow, let me, I am like really fascinated now by this whole story and all this thing that happened. So, um, so for anybody like me who, who didn't know, so I'll give you guys the quick rundown of, because this is based on an actual real historical thing that happened in American history. So the wreck of the Edmund for Chelsea. So this song was written as a factual retelling of a shipwreck on Lake Superior in November of 1975, that claimed the lives of 29 crew members. On November 10th, 1975, the SS Edmund Fitzgerald broke in half and sank in Lake Superior. The storm she was caught in reported winds from 35 to 52 knots and waves from anywhere to 10 to 35 feet high. That's crazy. See, and you think, oh, it's a lake. But then, like, look at a map of Lake Superior. <laughs> it's ginormous. It's enormous. And Lake Superior definitely has a long, long history of um you know shipwreck ship shipwrecks because it is a massive massive uh body of water uh so according to this uh, the Edmund Fitzgerald was loaded with 26,116 one, 26, tons of taconite pellets which is iron ore uh and Burlington Northern Railroad dock number one her destination was Zug Island on the Detroit River there were 29 crew members who perished in the sinking in the U.S. this song was held out of the number one spot so this song reached number two that's how popular this song was everybody and when that's it was released so good <laughs> it was held out of number one by rod stewart's tonight's the night which i mean to be fair you compare the song so like rod stewart compared to i know but tonight's the night is such a lame song <laughs> tonight's the night i mean i get it but, like... <laughs> but if you were to put these artists on the chart like you wouldn't necessarily think that this particular yeah. song would chart a rod stewart song but uh, by the way for the record if you want to give me if you want to get an instant number two record rating that's equivalent to uptown girl tonight's the <laughs> night is right there <laughs> And I like Rod Stewart, but tonight's the night. Ugh, no way. I have one song that I really like from him. That maybe is, he's, that maybe is he's gonna end up on my. I list. may even as a cheese ball song. Anyway, <laughs> so and then, but the song was also nominated for Song of the Year in the Grammys, but it was beaten by Barry Manilow's "I Write the Songs," which that is a good song. <laughs> which again, artist to artist, I mean, what can you say? Yeah. So he was up against some stiff competition that year. Yeah. Um. So another thing I pulled here. So Lightfoot recalled when he was writing the song, this was a, he did this during a Reddit AMA. The Edmund Fitzgerald really seemed to go unnoticed at the time. Anything I'd seen in newspapers or magazines were very short, brief articles. And I felt I would like to expand upon the story of the sinking of the ship itself. It was quite an undertaking to do that. I went and brought all, I went and bought all of the old newspapers and got everything in chronological order and went ahead and did it because I already had a melody in my mind. And it was from an old Irish dirge that I'd heard when I was about three and a half years old. I think it was one of the first pieces of music that registered to me uh, being a, be, sorry, let me start that over. I think it was one of the first pieces of music that registered to me as being a piece of music, he continued. That's where the melody comes from. It's from an old Irish folk song. So, which you can hear it right away when it starts. It's that, that definitely like total Irish folk song uh, kind of feeling. So once again, did not, I got to be honest with you, Amanda, 
and I'm not, you know, and this isn't about the content of the song or anything like that. I just, I am surprised. I got to be, there's moments in American culture where I go, wow, I cannot believe that this song was this popular. <laughs> um, that it was almost number one. And, and I understand. I get it. I, I understand, um, you know, when he, the, this happened in 75 and the song was released uh, three years later. So I, I understand, you know, and, yeah. but yeah, I'm like shocked that this song is was this, I'm still so shocked that this I, song is as popular. I can tell you this: if that shipwreck had happened in the '80s, mm-hmm. this song would not have been like been a hit in the '80s. No, it was very of the time, and Gordon Lightfoot was obviously very, very what? relevant. I mean, you know, at, at that time as well. So is it, it? It's the time, right? Yep. Okay, so Sanders love this song. Huh? Michiganders love this. Well, song. and this is where I'm saying, in in the Michigan, you know, that whole, and this is like the Midwest and all that, very, very proud. So I get it. So there's no cut in anybody in Michigan anywhere. <laughs> but I, I, I listen to the song a lot. So yes, it's got the Irish feel of that that folk song. So it's the you know, dun, 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 you know, the whole like swinging yeah. thing. Um, I don't know about this song. I, I, oh my gosh. I it's a cool song. I know I, I don't want to offend anybody here, but I'm just going out from a, a, the song <laughs> itself. It was hard for me to get into this song. Now I, I like the the storytelling aspect. I'm glad I heard it because now this is on my radar about this this point in American history, um, and so I think it's a beautiful tribute to those and the families and all that. So I think it's good that way. I don't think I would ever listen to this song again in the sense of like I would voluntarily put this on. Totally fair. Totally fair. And honestly, I sent it more to you to not even see your rating, but more to just share the song with you right. as a song, because I thought you would find it very fascinating. I do. I And I did. And I did find it very fascinating because then I started putting me in a black hole of the history side. Yeah. It was like going down a rabbit hole, sorry, of like doing the history. I'm like, oh, I want to learn more about this now. Yeah. Let me watch these documentary. Like, I want to like learn more about this incident as opposed to like learning sure. more about Gordon Lightfoot. So. <laughs> So I, I'm going to award it three records because it now has put this 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 tragedy on my radar. I want to learn more about it. I want to be more educated. I know there was already started finding out things of like they initially blamed the crew for or put half the blame of the sinking on the crew. And then later a Canadian documentary found out after it was I forgot the name of the show. And they actually got evidence to prove that it was not the crew's fault. So I already started going down this whole like. Like, wow, that's listen, fascinating. Like as he referenced, it had like 30 to 50 foot waves. Yeah. And winds galore. Like how is that the crew? <laughs> I, I know. Well, they're talking about a hatch, an open hatch. So and so I'm like already now, like, I want to watch every piece of film <laughs> about this. And and specifically now the show that like they're talking about that like referenced like how they found this out and the investigation because they did the dive and like the whole thing. So okay. There's I'm invested now in learning about the, the <laughs> shipwreck of the Edmund Fitzgerald. Not so much the song itself, but yeah. I will credit because the song has now got me interested in this. And that was his whole point, right? It was well, mission accomplished. So mission three accomplished. records, three records for all that. I like However, that. from the music side, I will probably never listen to this song again. I like it. So friends, there's your history lesson for the week. <laughs> Sorry, that was very long winded to get to the point of saying it's three records, but it was good. It was good. It was yes. very thorough, and I liked your your explanation. Of Thank it. you all for hanging in there on that. <laughs> Cheers to that explanation. <laughs> all right, your third song to me again is "Alive" by Pod or Pod. I feel so alive for the first time. I was relieved there were lyrics in this song. <laughs> oh, good! It's not an instrumental. It's not an instrumental. Um, it's what was very interesting, Chris, is mm-hmm. without hesitation, when this song started, I guarantee you a year ago, I would have turned the station or skipped the song. Right. I would have prejudged it and I would have been like, what are they listening to? <laughs> I would have been very opinionated about that. But mm-hmm. now that we are almost a year into our show, You're I was a little more amazed. By this coming on. And so I think my taste is changing. I really I think, think that, my taste is changing. I think you and I, over the last year, have both evolved. Very musically. much. I love it. I love it. Um, 
So I have a very different tolerance than I did a year ago. I really enjoy the lyrics. This band is, well, I won't, I want you to finish your reaction and then I will give and you. All I could say, I dove into, I wanted to look at the lyrics. Yeah. Uh -huh. And when I looked at the lyrics, I didn't know anything about this band. I didn't know anything about the song before mm -hmm. that. And the first thing I thought as I was reading the lyrics, I said, this could have been a Christian song. So part of, and I stopped because I wanted to give you the opportunity to talk about it a little bit. I didn't, mm -hmm. I didn't want to know if it was a Christian song. I, cause I had never heard of them or this song before. Mm -hmm. So I just thought it was interesting that that was my take. And I'm like, Oh my gosh, this could have been a Christian hit. And maybe it is. And I have no idea. So uh, talk to me about POD. Band is. Yeah. POD, P you know, me. POD payable on death. Uh, POD. On death, is that what that stands for? Yeah. Oh, they are one of the largest and most successful Christian metal like rock metal bands so they are a with. christian band yes they are and they this was this song was a huge breakout song for them when this came out this was not their first record but this was the record that got them into mainstream interesting success so they were able to cross over with this record and become more than just sort of like the a christian rock christian metal scene band and uh and all these guys let me tell you i've listened to lots of it so i'm gonna say this this was my introduction to this but i am not a huge pod fan however i love their message every time i see interviews with these guys they come off as the nicest dudes like totally you know very very family oriented not and they've achieved a lot of success humbled guy like Everything about these guys are like they would be guys that I would love to hang out with and chill out with. Like they just seem like the nicest guys on earth. Like success is knock under their head. And uh, and I was like, I purposely wanted to put this on your radar because I'm like, I think Amanda's gonna like this song. I think she's gonna dig it, and I think she's gonna dig this message. And so, and these guys are a very good example to me of like a band that, like you said, I think this could be Christian. And I think that's the key part to their success is that. They share a very positive message without beating you over the head with it of saying, you know what I'm Absolutely. saying? So I, and they've evolved. I mean, if you listen to their older stuff, you'll hear a little bit more of that, but sure, as time's gone on, they've have really been able to incorporate the message without, um, like I said, beating you over the head with it. So mm -hmm. I feel like then it becomes, and they're a very inclusive band. They're like, we want to be inclusive. We want to us. It's more important that people listen to our music and get into this and like, mm -hmm. then kind of pigeonholing, but like, we're a Christian rock band. So only Christians can listen to us. And like, that's not what we want. Like, we want to be a band for everybody to, to listen to. And they're just all positive. I don't know. I can't say enough good things about them because they're one of these bands where like, maybe I'm not into everything that they do musically, mm -hmm. but I really dig the way they come across and the way they present themselves. And I like the, the positivity, like the positive mental attitude these guys have. And that's inspiring to me. I think I wish more bands would actually like act like the way these guys do. I love that. Yeah. And honestly, when I first heard it, I really just thought it was like a love song. Just a general love right. song could have been about a woman. It made yeah. complete sense to me. But after when I physically like looked at the lyrics with my own eyeballs and was mm -hmm. digesting them, I'm like, this could totally be a Christian song. But I really didn't think that it was going to be one that you were sending to me. So I wanted it was so interesting that it actually is basically a Christian song. I Love it. And my lyrics that I love so much is I feel so alive for the very first time. Now that I see you, I could never look away. And for me, that was very much how I felt with my relationship, you know, as a Christian, not to get into that too much. Right, right. But but I think when you feel that way, that's why I immediately was like, those words are what spoke to my heart. I'm like, oh my right. gosh, I love it. So I, with all of that, not having ever heard of them, it because it does have a tone. I mean, the tone is very traditional of something you would send me <laughs> right no i mean and, and that's the other thing too is that the guys they're very good musicians they're yeah. great players they're good songwriters and i think that's also important too yeah. you know that they're in like whatever you want i mean they're, they're into the scene and they're they, yeah. they embrace that and the sound and they've they've turned it into their thing like they've got their brand now like this is what pod sounds like you know well pod you know me, and I'm giving you five records. <laughs> <laughs>
they don't know me, but yeah. they're about to. They're about to. Hey, POD, you just gained a new fan. Her name yeah, is Amanda Sharp. Thanks to Chris Baglio. Look at that. <laughs> I, love I will it. send you. I want to send you this interview. Um, and this is one of the cool interviews that I had I had heard with them. So they're on a podcast I listen to a lot. Uh, uh, the Punk Rock NBA. I think I've told you that before. So anyway, Finn McKenty. He did a really, really, and this was last year. It was, a, but he did an interview with Sonny, um, the singer, and it's like, like you listen to that interview, and like even if you'd never hear them before, you become a fan. Nice. Like if you've never I'm, even heard their music, you'd be like, man, I got I got half to listen to them now that I've heard this interview. I and how powerful is that? And that's why I feel like it's, it's so cool. important to to no matter what your success is or anything of that nature, to just stay humble and kind because yeah. you reach more people. You really do. You really do. When you're just a human being, it's uh, it's great. And yeah, I, I I just I like I said, I like their attitude and their approach. So therefore, but I want I it took me a while, but I was like, I really wanted to get you introduced. And there's more. I've got I probably got more Christian hardcore sure. metal stuff that you'd be like, oh my God, forget it, Chris. I don't care what <laughs> I don't care. I don't care how many times her name dropping Jesus. I'm not listening. But, like, <laughs> but I always find it fascinating, you know. <laughs> how many times her name dropping Jesus? <laughs> There's your quote for the day, friends. Yeah. I don't care how much they name drop Jesus. I'm not listening to this. I'm not listening to this. <laughs> I'll drink to that. There you go. <laughs> Cheers. So, um, oh, good stuff. Good choices for me this week. Chris. Yeah, no, this was this was very good. I liked this song selection. It was interesting to listen to all these songs. Uh, definitely have found, like I said, the Lone Bellow. Mm -hmm. Dig it. Like I, they're on my radar. I can't wait to dive into more from them. And uh, you know, I appreciate all the other songs you sent me. I think, like I said, they're they're all interesting, and I can't wait to watch some documentaries on the uh, the wreck of the, yeah. the, the 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 shipwreck of the uh, or the sinking of the Edmund Fitzgerald. So I want to learn more about that that uh, that thing. Oh look. I am. So, so Randall, quick side story. I had a photography or not a photography, a photo shoot yesterday. And so it was with a few of my agents and I went to Timmy Ho-Ho's is what we call it here. That's just kind of a me thing. And uh, I got the it, it's what, it would, it would, when you say, yeah, when you go, that's what we call it here. Well, really just me. <laughs> really just me. Um, I got the big old box. So I'm, I'm drinking out of the leftover cups because who wants to do dishes? No way. No one. Gotta throw the paper cup away. <laughs> Absolutely, but those who really love the environment, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, but it's it's a it's a, it's a disposable cup. It's alright. Yeah, it'll but break this one's down. For you, Randall. Yes, thank you to our Canadian friends <laughs> and neighbors who watch and support the show, like Randall. <laughs> and this is, you never know where our show's gonna go. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, not at all. This is it. We this is the show, songs, but <laughs> there's we so much more. We talk so much, but see, there was like a history lesson going on today. We talked about the Edmund Fitzgerald. Yes. So we got a whole history lesson on that. You learned oh. about intervals, and you learned that POD is payable on death, and they sing about Jesus and Christianity in a, in a way that you would never have thought of. That you would never have known. I love it. It was good. Yes. What a fun show! It was. it was. It was a very very fun show. So. Um, a man and I would love to keep doing the show all day long, but you know what? We have to get to our, uh, our real jobs now <laughs> and go do our thing. But if you'd like to hear us every single day and if you'd like to support us in any way, Great uh, you could do that, uh, by going to our buymeacoffee.com backslash TCAS and pick a level that you feel comfortable supporting the show, uh, because every little bit helps and helps us pay the bills around here and keeps us coming to you live every single Monday. And uh, who knows? Maybe one day we'll be coming to you live every single day in the future. In the future, that would be fun. Uh, yeah, so we would love to be doing a show every day. But uh, until then, uh, we would appreciate the support. If you'd love to commission a show where you get to pick all the songs, six songs, you get to pick. You pick whatever you want. It's your show, and we'll react and review as we do with the songs that we share with each other. Recently, did an interview. Uh, with Big Dan, thank you for sponsoring that show. Yes. Uh, but yeah, if you want to commission a show and pick all the songs, go over to buymeacoffee.com once again, and uh, you will see the option there to commission a show. And uh, all those links are in the show notes and via the description below. And if you'd like to become an official show sponsor, 
And I feel sure she'll sponsor Amanda Sharp. That's like, that's like a big deal. That's a, it's a, absolutely. It's a big deal. Betty just went by in his hearse. Hi, Betty. Betty. <laughs> Betty. <laughs> so if you'd like to become an official show sponsor of the Chris and Amanda show, you can sponsor one show. You can sponsor multiple shows. You can sponsor us forever if you want. We are uh, all. If you're interested, yes. Tim Hortons. Inter- just saying. <laughs> just saying. Just saying. Just saying. You know. Uh, head over. <laughs> you can actually send us an email directly or DM us, but you can uh, send us to an email to the Chris and Amanda show at gmail.com. And we will give you more information about how you can become an official sponsor of the Chris and Amanda show. Absolutely. And if you're listening to the replay of this and all the stuff, check us out. The Chris and Amanda show, wherever you listen to podcasts, uh, you can also subscribe, follow us over on YouTube, Twitch, Facebook, TikTok, Instagram at the Chris and Amanda Show. We're all those all places. The socials. We're, Have a good everywhere. time. We're everywhere. So, <laughs> with that being said, any <sighs> final words, Amanda Sharp? It's, Just we've cheers come to, the end. to another good show because I enjoy Boom. this. It starts our week out so well. I know our, we do this for our listeners too, but we do this a lot for us because it really gets us in the spirit for the week and it's our therapy. It is. It is. This is how we kick off every single week, having fun. So thanks for being here, everyone. It's just greatly appreciated. You make it fun. Yes, absolutely. You all do make it very fun. Thank you for everybody who checked in, watched us live. Thank you, Randall, for commenting and hanging out with us today and everybody else who was watching live. We appreciate you. If you'd like to hang out with us and watch live and or comment, uh, you could do that. We come. We are on uh, Mondays. <laughs> Take two. <laughs> if you'd like to listen to the show and participate live, hang out with us on Mondays at 8.15 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, where we broadcast live on Twitch, Twitter, Facebook, and YouTubes. The YouTubes. The YouTubes. The YouTube. I'm from Michigan. We put S's on everything. It's what we do. And that's like not just yeah. an Amanda thing. Yes. <laughs> Not just an Amanda thing. That's just not an Amanda thing. There's TikToks about that. See, TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> so true. The TikToks. The TikToks. <laughs> All right. Pop me, off. Pop me off. That's it. We're done, everybody. Coffee's wearing off. Time for a new cup of oh, coffee. <laughs> we will see you next Monday. Thank you all so much. You're all amazing. And uh, have a great week, everyone. Have an amazing week. Bye. <laughs>